We have things that we're hoping keep meeting the needs of obviously operators like you in the field on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this applicator uh, very quickly um, has a number of features that we, we think are most important to technicians. The translucent bottle so that you can see and accurately record the amount of material that's in there. Very uh, important. Very important. So that, that's one of our key and features. That, that's okay, that's designed into the tank. That's so it's embossed. not a decal that will come off. Okay, that's, right. that's, that's very important. Embossed right into the right, tank. Right, right, right. Um, all of the, uh, uh, the jack systems have their own built-in safety valve. Uh, this particular uh, unit has um, not only a hand pump, right. like standard okay. units that are in the industry, but also on the back side here we have an air see. input. So you can attached to Absolutely. A, an air compressor. Attached to one of our air compressors that are in the field. Okay. And when you get into large jobs and this type of thing in a liquid environment, one pressurization under a liquid environment, I'll say that one more time, it will dispense all the material. I see. One so charge. You charge one time. Yep. And that dispenses all the liquid. Uh, the liquid. But it's so a little you, different with the foaming. Well, a little bit different with the foaming. Absolutely. When you uh, uh, start foaming now, you're using up more energy of this bottle. foam. Exactly. And I'm going to get you to demonstrate that. So I'll just get back to the features. And um, one well, of the Michael, big things. One of, my, one of my questions would be with this, you can't overpressurize this tank then, right? No, you can't. Okay, because this operates at about 120 PSI. PSI. Correct. And this operates at about 50 PSI. Correct. So that's a, very a safety important gun. Very important, very feature. important piece of the machinery. Okay. Each one of the compressors have, you know, two gauges too, Raymond. Just so that everybody knows, and they're meant to, uh, you know, turn that pressure down to about 45 psi, 50 psi, okay. and then they charge the system. But guess what? We we all know accidents happen. So each and every one of the it's devices. It's nice to have a device that will back you up oh, yeah. safety wise. And you know, it, it scares the bejesus out of everybody because when it goes off, we all hear it and go, oh, what's that? But I'd rather have that than a bum go <laughs> off. I'd much rather listen to that. Exactly. And I want to basically turn this part over to you because it's all about the application. Like, what, is, what does Jack bring to the table for you? Well, Michael, let me let me just start off by saying that we're all accustomed to the liquid application. That's been the standard of the trade for umpteen years. Right. But with today's technology, it's more important to get precisely where the insects are, make a delivery in a, in a way that covers as much area as you can and completes the job. By, and one of the things that can help you complete the job is foam because foam acts differently than water. Right. So it will go up instead of just always down. So fill up a gallery, or fill up a void. It will contact insects in places where you would not contact otherwise with just a liquid. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the liquid. That's a very important part of this, uh, right. this okay. container here. But to me, the key is in these two foaming outlets here. And then the choice is a wet foam or a dry foam. Well, in certain circumstances where you wanna deliver maybe a, a nice liquid foam, eight to 10 parts uh, expansion ratio, that might be for uh, spot treating uh, large termite galleries and, and Under infested slabs, wood. Maybe. Underneath slabs, right. uh, maybe even drains in, in kitchens or hospitals and things of that nature where you want to deliver quite a bit of volume of material because the, the water is still the vehicle that's taking your active ingredient right. to the targeted point. Be a good so, time to jump into and, and talk about these different tips because we do have the crack and crevice well, pen and, and a fan spray. So here's this the crack and crevice does a lot and, of and gallery ways. treating tip of choice because yeah. you can seal it up. Once you have the hole either drilled or if you can manage to get this in without drilling the hole, you can seal the hole with this little black tip. Right. In which case you can stop the material from flushing back. Now the nice thing about it is the hose is so. clear. Yep. So uh, if you're in a situation where you're, where you're making a treatment with a small uh, material, you can actually see the material moving through here. So it gives a technician, hey, is that, is that hole filled? Yeah. Is it still flowing? Yeah. Is it stopped? A visual. So it, you've got feedback immediately so that you don't pull that back out of the hole and then foam go everywhere. Some, some other things might go wrong. So it's, I like that little piece right there. And I also like the part about the clear hose because you can watch the material. We've got a variety of different tips, but we can show how easily it is to clip into this unit. Well, that seems like a really oh, okay. good treatment tip for doing 
termite control down below slab. Right. You don't have to necessarily go very deep because the foam is going to go wherever air exists. So it's going to fill that void underneath the slab very, very quick. It's great right for now. drains. I've used this in drains and it does really well. Now, for a drain, yeah. I'm, I'm going to choose, let's just choose a dryer foam just sure. to, for demonstration. That way there. And what, I'll hold the bucket here. So I think there's probably going to be some water because this has been sitting for a while. Yeah. But it will quickly come right over to a very dry foam. That, that foam there, if I was a guessing man, I'd say that's probably about 20 to 1. So for every ounce of water, you're making 20 ounces of foam. So you can deliver that ounce of, of water over a great distance very, very quickly. Look at how fast it fills up. I could fill up a gallon of foam here in just a matter of probably 15, 20 seconds. Let's show them so, the difference. Like, all right, and let's that's go to the wet fast. foam. We'll just disconnect off of there and now let's now, go into the wet let's foam. say I want to go to a wet foam that application. And, and maybe it's on the same building, so I just slip over. Now I'm into a wet foam. Now there's a very wet foam. That's about 8 to 10. That's probably six to eight yep. uh, expansion ratio. So that's a very important uh, uh, changeover. So now if I want to go back, I just simply go back, maybe go back to the dry, dry foam. foam. Yeah, that's a good put, demonstration actually. Right? Put just the foam right back on there. It works. Now, <laughs> now I'm back to a dry foam. So uh, the thing about it is what I've found is that spiders and trailing ants, or at least in my area, are the number one pest that I either get the most sales from or I get the most complaints from. So to get to where the spiders and ants are is critical. So when you, when you attach this extension with a fan spray tip on the end, you can go right across the eaves of the house or you can go across the guttering of the house, you can go down the side of the wall, you can get in the cracks, you can go under the mulch. So there's the technician has an opportunity to access the target pest and once once you're that close to the to the pest the materials are work so well that they will take care of the job for you. for you that summarizes jack for now and um i think there's enough information here for people to take another look see how, how many ways it can be used absolutely thanks Randy. okay Thank you.